Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, let us learn about electron and positron pair production. So, as we go along, we will understand uh, what is positron and its characteristics and how these, uh, this antiparticle is produced from which phenomena, etc. And uh, this phenomenon of electron and positron pair production this uh, confirms the particle nature of photons. So there are different uh, uh, phenomena that uh, help us to uh, gauge that a photon has particle nature. For example, Compton's scattering, photoelectric effect. Uh, and this is also one important phenomenon. But initially when Schrodinger and Heisenberg uh, developed quantum mechanics theory, so that was only proposed for non-relativistic phenomena. And if we combine that non-relativistic quantum mechanics with uh, special relativity and by doing that uh, Dirac in 1928 uh, by combining special relativity and the quantum mechanics uh, he developed relativistic quantum mechanics. So, from by understanding the relativistic quantum mechanics uh, the existence of a new particle which is called positron uh, is predicted and uh, yeah and this is antiparticle of electron it has the same mass as that of electron but uh, opposite charge uh, that is positive charge in nine so how uh, and also it is uh, experimentally found before finding it was predicted but later on it is uh, uh, found when Anderson he is studying the trail it's left by cosmic rays uh, in a cloud chamber so based on that uh, when high frequency electromagnetic radiations are passed passed through this lead foil uh, then individual photon of the radiation disappeared and it produced an electron and positron pair. So the experiment is basically later conducted uh, by sending high frequency electromagnetic radiation into lead foil. This resulted in electron and positron. So basically here the energy is being converted into matter because electrons are matter and the photons are not massless uh, uh, particles uh, which or energy packets basically quanta. Both classical mechanics and relativistic quantum mechanics fail to uh, determine or predict the uh, antiparticle of electron that is uh, positron. Happen in free space because uh, it needs conservation of energy. Hence, uh, there should be a um, nucleus which is present should be present in the vicinity so that whenever uh, electron and positron are produced uh, electron and positron pair are produced then there should be charge conservation and uh, momentum conservation and energy conservation so this cannot happen in a free arbitrary empty space there are some conditions uh, or certain specific uh, uh, conditions that should be there uh, uh, for this to happen. That is that photon must interact with, the, uh, with an external field like a Coulomb field provided by for example atomic nucleus. So we know that nucleus is consists of protons and neutrons and nucleus has positive charge. So that um, it can absorb some of the momentum uh, once the electrons and positrons are produced. Uh, so basically, um, we know that photon has energy H nu. Now, when um, it gives rise to electron and positron, then uh, we will have these set of energies. One is rest mass energy of uh, electron.
so we have rest mass energy of electron and the kinetic energy of electron rest mass energy of positron and the kinetic energy of positron plus recoil energy of nucleus so whatever the energy we have for the photon that must be conserved hence to take the remaining energy apart from kinetic energy of electron and kinetic energy of positron we need uh, uh, an atomic nucleus uh, uh, which will take some of the energy hence uh, uh, however this kn energy is small so as the rest mass energy of electron and positron are same because their masses are equal uh, hence uh, we can write it as twice um, rest mass of uh, ener energy of electron plus kinetic energies uh, of electron as well as positron they are different uh, and whenever the process is reverse like when electron and positron collide that results in positronium so basically this is the positronium which is a um, a one unit um, or basically there is some binding between this uh, uh, electron and its antiparticle positron in this manner so which is called positronium so ultimately this positronium will transform into photon that is after a mean lifetime of about 100 picoseconds and like uh, uh, in the case of producing electron and antiparticle positron from photon there we need a nucleus but here we did not have anything in the environment so just a um, electron and positron if collided ultimately they become photon so uh, as you can see here 100 picoseconds is uh, very less time that is uh, that's why we do not find uh, positrons in the nature because as soon as a positron is created uh, it will collide with electron then it will become positronium and after a, around a mean lifetime of 100 picoseconds basically it's an average time either it could sometimes it could be more or less but uh, the mean time is 100 picoseconds then it will become photon so that's the reason we don't find uh, positrons in the nature so basically um, in the reverse process the matter is being converted into energy and all like electron all other subatomic particles have antiparticles like uh, anti proton for proton and anti neuron neutron for uh, neutron likewise now for example uh, in order to produce a electron and positron pair what would be the minimum energy of photon so that uh, uh, we get that pair also find the frequency and uh, wavelength and we have seen that uh, so h nu uh, h nu is equal, approximately is equal to two times rest mass energy of electron plus kinetic energy of electron plus kinetic energy of uh, sorry electron and uh, proton um, sorry kinetic energy of a positron now in order for the minimum photon we, we can assume this zero and this is also zero so h nu should be um, it should be minimum h nu minimum should be uh, two times m e square so which is equal to two times uh, phi level Kilo electron volt, which would be like uh, one thousand twenty-two kilo electron volt. 
or uh, it can be equal to 1.022 mega electron volt so this is the minimum energy of the photon that is required for producing the electron and positron pair uh, now you can find the frequency that is uh, corresponding photon frequency nu is equal to this 1.0 power 6 in power minus 19 joules uh, divided by h that is uh, so you will get frequency here and then uh, wavelength on you by uh, c that the speed of the light this will come so you may calculate these uh, and write in comments uh, along with that you can also take up this look at this question which is an assignment for you uh, so what is the phenomena that results in the production of uh, antiproton and antineutron uh, please uh, write in the comments and let me know. Thank you.